How many of you understand that we really did have a victory this week in the Supreme Court? Amen. Amen. And it should have been that way a long time ago, you know, kick back to the states and let them decide, let the voters decide. Now you've got an opportunity to vote uh, whenever it comes time to vote on different things, issues. You can call, you can go to the White, the White House, you can go to the state capitol, you can do whatever you want to do. You see your representatives, you can see the senators, uh, whatever. You can go see the governor if you want to take time to try to make an appointment. But, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm thankful uh, that, that many, many people do stand up uh, for life, okay, and, and not uh, killing little babies. And I think most of you understand what abortion really does, how it, how it happens. There, there's a lot of controversy all over it. Let's do pray for the, uh, I, I don't know hardly how to say this, but evil men and seducers just get worse and worse, the Word of God says. And, and let's just pray that, uh, you know, that things can kind of stay under control as far as uh, sometime writing and stuff goes when people disagree with you. They want to get out and fight and get mean and ugly and tear people's property up and shove people down, beat on them and all that. There's a preacher in Seattle, Washington, some of you might have heard about it already. Brother Johnny sent me a clip that uh, they actually throwed, beat on him, throwed him down, tore his Bible all up because he was, you know, rejoicing or standing up for uh, against abortion, okay? The right to live. And uh, uh, so anyway, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of people feel different ways over it and all that, but uh, it really was a victory for the, for the uh, saints of God that, that understand what it's all about. You know, there was a lot of babies being killed in the Bible that God was against that started a long time ago. How uh, they even tried to stomp out Moses. They tried to stomp out uh, Jesus, but it didn't work. And, uh, you know, I heard somebody say one time, you know, it's a shame there's not a real legit, I'm talking about cure for cancer. Uh, there probably was, but maybe that doctor that was going to come up with it got aborted. You know, you never know. There's a lot of, a lot of things could have happened. But I'm so glad my mom didn't abort me Amen. because y'all wouldn't be looking at me right now. If you had, so I'm glad my mama believed in, in the right to life. How about you? Aren't you glad you're here? And uh, so thank the Lord for it. Uh, I'd like to um, I'd like to sing sing my song. I can't help it. Y'all y'all know my song. And uh, you you uh, <laughs> how many of y'all feel feel this song? And we appreciate all of you that are here today and. I, I'm, I'm going to be on the subject this morning. I come out, I actually turned my chair around. I just was bawling and squalling and couldn't help it. I, the scripture the Lord led me to, it's a serious scripture. And um, I, I like serious scriptures, don't get me wrong, but still, there's, they're uh, gut-wrenching. I don't, I don't know how to, how to say it. And, uh, but so we're just going to believe the Lord to touch hearts and lives and do what he wants to do. And I, I don't believe we've got a whole lot of time left. I, I really don't. I believe the Lord could come any time. So I want to say thank you that are here. Thank you all for being faithful. Most of you all are here nearly every Sunday, every time doors open, nearly. I mean, some of you can't come on Wednesday night. I understand some of you don't want to. That's your business. But I don't know about you. I want to be in the house of the Lord when I can be. How about you? And until the coming of the Lord, I want to be faithful. I want to hang in there. I want to, I want to look for Jesus. I want to keep looking for him. And, and he said he's coming one of these days. And one of these days he won't tear and he'll come. And with all the stuff going on in the world right now, I tell you what, it, it's getting to be a mess. Amen. It's getting to be a mess. We, we need divine intervention from God like we never have needed it before, you know. And, and I honestly believe, and I'll just say this and shut up on this subject, but if God's people, God's people that are called by His name will humble Himself and turn some gun smoke off, will humble Himself and pray, 
humble himself and pray. And turn from our wicked ways. Not those wicked folks out in the world. Those demon- they, look, they're going to hell if they don't change. And I will tell you something. Jesus said, few there be that find it. Straighten there is a way and few there be. Have you read that? Straighten there is a way that leads to heaven and few there be that find it. He didn't say, but he said, broad is the way that leads to destruction and many be on that road. So it's just a few. But he didn't say we couldn't be one of those few. And if my people, which are called by my name, he said, God said this, will humble themselves and pray. Then, he said, we can expect to hear from heaven. And we can expect him to forgive our, our sins. And we can expect him, I like this, Heal our land. <laughs> How many of y'all remember America like it was 50 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever? You believe God can still heal our land? Yeah. Amen. And I believe if God's people begin to pray, He'll be faithful and just to hear us, forgive us, to heal us. He can move. Ain't nothing too big. Because you see, I've read in the Word where it says in several places, but God's angry at the wicked every day. And he can put a stop to it anytime. I told you a long time ago, it wouldn't surprise me if people don't begin to have heart attacks. The heart failing them for fear after looking at the things that come on the face of this earth. Because what he said in Matthew 24. But he told you and me to be ready and stay ready. But the whole time I've been serving him, you know, I talked about my childhood a little bit, my dad last Sunday that I loved so very much. Oh, and, and then one thing I didn't say, all the rest of the kids, the brothers and the, the in-laws, they said they're going to whoop daddy whenever they got 21, when they want to. I never did want to whip my daddy because I loved my daddy and I respected my daddy. I wouldn't want to hurt my daddy for nothing in the world when he was living. I don't ever remember even getting mad at him. I had a good daddy and I had a good mama. And they raised me in church and I'm glad they did. Sure, they raised me off the floor a time or two, but I, I deserved it. I needed it. Little hickory tea is good for anybody. People say tea is good for you, see. So. But all my life, God's been good to me. Even when my mom was going, God let me be up, holding her hand, let me move back from Florida and get there in time before he took her on. We moved to Oklahoma about two weeks, wasn't it, baby? I think that mom slipped on out. She actually had Kathy up in Muskogee. And I was laying there holding, I mean, standing there holding mama's hand. She said, son, two o'clock in the morning, she said, you hear the angels? <laughs> and I said, I wasn't going to lie to her. I didn't hear no angels. But I felt something in that room. I felt the presence of the Lord. And I said, no, mama, I don't hear the angels. You don't hear them? I said, no, mama, I don't. But I'm glad you do. And she said, they're coming. They're right there. And I don't believe it's 45 seconds. I said, no, Mama, I don't see them yet. But I know you do, and I'm glad you do. And she slipped 
right out of that old physical body and went on to the portals of glory. The Lord sent angels to carry her, not to Abraham's bosom no longer, but for her to live it was Christ, but for her to die was gain. And for her to be absent from that body was to be present with the Lord. <laughs> so all my life he has been faithful. He's been good to me. All my life he has been faithful. And all my life he has been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Sing it now. All my life you have been faithful. Can you say that about God that you serve? And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. Don't you love to hear him when he speaks to you? You have led me through the fire in the darkest night. You're close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. Sing it to him now. Thank him. And all my life have been faithful. And all my life have been so, so good. And with every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. We're going to sing the chorus again. And all my life have been faithful. He not let me down one time. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I, I tell you what, I will sing of the goodness of God. We're going to sing it one more time. I'm going to tell you a little quick, short story, real quick. Somebody say, you can't tell nothing short. <laughs> it takes one to know one. That's all I got to say. But when I was 41 years old, I hit a deer on a motorcycle. 70 something mile an hour, I just passed a diesel truck. I totaled that bike out, went sliding down the pavement over 500 feet. The state police in Arkansas said I hit it over 500 feet. The truck driver said I flipped and flopped three or four somersaults. I thought I was going round and round and round. And let me tell you something, the first prayer I prayed when I was laying on my stomach, sliding, looking back, the motorcycle fixing to come over me, I said, God, help! He was faithful. I flopped over on my back. I didn't do it. He did it. I couldn't. I'd already tried. I was moving on. Like the old tomcat that hit the gate. Some of y'all don't get it, but that's fine. Then I had another problem. I flipped over and I was still sliding. I was still moving. I mean, it was fast. Make an awful noise, especially when my helmet would hit the pavement. I had to crunch up my feet up. I'd already got over to the left hand of the road. Motorcycle come by me. God did that with the trailer on the back. Just barely missed me. I felt debris from it. Got off in front of me, way up there. And then the next thing you know, I was sliding, fixing to hit it. I called on God one more time. 
All this happened real quick. You know what I said? I said, God, stop me. That's all I said. First of all, God helped me. He did. He flipped me over. Made me clear the motorcycle. Then I said, God, stop me because I was going to crash into it. And I knew what my, I could just imagine in my head what my bones and legs and knees, feet would look like. When I hit that, that motorcycle about this tall then on the side of the road sideways, this big one. And I was feeling hit right under there where the engine was. And that's all I said. God, stop me. That's all I had time to say. And all of a sudden I felt, now I can't up here, but I felt it up here. It's like two big old hens grabbed me under my armpit, standing up behind me going down the road fast. It probably was. It was probably an angel. And grabbed me and zoop and stopped me just about 12 feet from hitting that motorcycle. I mean, I was moving probably 50, 60 mile an hour steel and just stopped me like that. God was faithful. And then not only was he left me alone there and I had pain like I never knew you could have. And then whenever they were putting me on the stretcher to take me in, well, no, I was laying on the ground before they put me on the stretcher. God sent a little bitty guy by. And he said, sir, do you mind if I pray with you? I said, no, sir, and I did. And about at least, I'm going to say, 75% of the pain left me. And I got up then, because everything was all broke. Kneecap was split. Collarbone was sticking out, fractured here, fractured here, fractured here. Said I'd be in a body cast for six months. Just this leg and this arm sticking out. And he said, is there anything else I can do for you? And I said, well, I got to get this bike off the highway and that stuff. I was going, actually going to preach a revival. And I said, now, Lord, next time you don't want me to go preach a revival somewhere, you let me know. Don't send a deer out if you would. <laughs> Just cutting up. And I said, yes, I, I, I need to get this bike off out of the road and all my stuff. He said, don't worry about it. See that little house right there? And I looked back up there, a little shotgun style house out five miles away from Fordyce. He said, I know them people, them good people, them Christian people. I've been knowing them for years. He said, you don't have to worry about it. Well, when my men come to get me that night, sure enough, after they got me out of the hospital, didn't take no meds or nothing, no shot or nothing. They just x-rayed me and told me what's wrong and sent the x-rays with me to give Dr. Charlie Cook back down there because it happened to be friends with him. Went to med school and fit three real hard. There was a motorcycle. That was his doctor and hit me up there. And he said, I know those people. They're Christian people, they're good people. I've known them for years. And I got there, it was just like he said, the bike was all washed off, it was covered up with a tarpaulin. It was better than what he said. And when my men come got me, I, they said, you need anything else, brother? And I said, yeah, call the man and woman out and let me talk to him just a minute. I wanted to get the name of that guy so I could send him a card. He was, they said he was going to Florida. And the lady said, sir, we don't know that guy from Adam. We've never seen him before in our life. God answered my prayer twice, and then number three, he sent an angel by there to minister to me and to take my bike up there and put it with somebody. <laughs> it, it couldn't be no other way. They didn't know it. So that's why I love singing this song. All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so so good and with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God. Here's one thing I want to do. I want every one of you this morning if there's something that you really needed God to do and he came through for you he was faithful to you he answered prayer, or he moved in a mighty way for you. And you want to just stand, not that we have time to tell it, because it wouldn't be enough time, but you want to just stand and acknowledge, God, you've been good to me. You've been faithful. And I'm going to sing this song to you. 
out of rejoicing. <laughs> Look at this. Sing it to him right now. And all my life have been faithful. How many times? Like I said, I've got a tough passage of Scripture here, and if you'll go ahead and put it up, it's Matthew chapter 25. How many of y'all already know when you say Matthew chapter 25, it's pretty tough? It's pretty tough. Okay. L listen to this, and, and you know, we, we've always said it kind of like this, the kingdom of heaven is like unto ten virgins. At, we kind of say it that way, don't we? And it just jumped out at me this morning, you know, to look at it. It says, then, then, not right now, but then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened, be likened unto ten virgins. Well, now, of course, back when Jesus was here telling this, giving this parable, this story that he was trying to explain how things are, we're, we're living probably now in the then, though, okay? We're... We're living now in the time when he was talking about because of some of the other terminology that's mentioned here in this chapter. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to go through this pretty quick and uh, uh, try, to, try to get the foundation of the Scripture, you know, just read. Okay, I started to say laid. It's already been laid, but listen to this. And I'll, uh, I can see that back there. Just, I believe I'll just stand up here. L listen, listen to the Word. You can see it on the screen there. You can look at any Bible. It's King James Version. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were stupid. I mean foolish. And they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. At midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go you out there, go, go, go you out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there should not be enough for us and for you, 
but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. But he answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch ye therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, and to another two, to another one, and to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents, and behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joys of the Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I'll make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. And then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, gathering where thou hast not strong. And I was afraid, and I went and hid thy talent in the earth, and lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered him, and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I, I sowed not, and gathered where I have not strong. Thou oughtest to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto everyone that hath it shall be given, and he shall have abundance, but him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast you the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. And before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He shall separate them one from the other, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And He shall set the sheep on His right hand, but the goats on the left. Kind of sounds, well, I better shut up. Then shall the king say unto them on the right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When, when saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? 
And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also to them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they answer him and say, Lord, when saw we a hunger, a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then answered he them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you did it not unto one of the least of these, you did it not unto me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. How many of y'all just as we read through, and, and kind of slowly, and I, I did that on purpose. You, some of you probably thought, well, he's trying to see it. I could see it. I mean, I could see it real good. Then, plus, I had my Bible here. I could see it. How, how many of y'all had some pretty serious thoughts right then, just with that chapter being read, for you hearing it again? I'm sure you've read it before. We've all read it. We've probably read it several times. We look at little places in it and try to zero in on something. I'm going to ask that again. How, how many of y'all really, you, you felt, ooh, there's a spot or two there that, I mean, you really had some deep thoughts about it. You know, I've always, uh, I've always looked at like, you know, I've quoted it before, but Matthew 25, you know, 20, 25 is just after 24, of course, and 24 talks about very much the coming of the Lord. That was, was real profound, wasn't it? 25 is after 24. Mark was laughing at me over there. <laughs> and uh, he's laughing with me. And, you know, Matthew chapter 24 talked about, uh, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. And it talked about, and they knew not until the flood came, whenever the flood came, and uh, to destroy everybody, the whole earth even, only the ones that believed Noah, the preacher of righteousness, got on board and was spared. You all know it was only a total of eight. It was just very few. And he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. And then he said, over there even, he talked about being ready in an hour that you think not, the Son of Man cometh. And you know, it just tickles me sometimes when I hear people say, well, I don't believe the Lord. I, I, I heard somebody was talking with me here. Well, I believe, I, I listen to this one, I listen to that one, I listen to somebody else, and they believe one guy said, we're going to have 50 years. I've heard all kinds of stuff. And I, I believe, let me tell you something, I believe the coming of the Lord could happen any time. I believe the stage is set, you know, and, and you can follow this one and count on that if you want to and live loose and live and not, not, not maybe do what the Holy Spirit is bidding you to do or telling you to do. Well, that's your business if you want to take a chance. But I will tell you that there's a, there's a scripture that has, I'm not saying it scared me, but I mean, it's a scary scripture. It does, it does scare me some and it scares me. Uh, it scares me for a lot of people but I have to look in a mirror and not say, okay, you know, and point this, uh, this, is, this is for y'all, okay? So I'm not standing up here today telling you it's for y'all, it's for me as well, okay? And, and there's scripture, but, but whenever you look at Matthew uh, 25 and 30, and when the guy come up, and y'all know the story, we just read it. You know, one, one guy, when the Lord gave this before he was going away, uh, you, uh, he, he gave one five talents, and he went out and gained five more. Give one, uh, uh, what was it, two talents, went out and gained two more. And then he went out, he gave one one, and he decided he knew the Lord would be expecting it back. And he knew he would he'd come for it. 
And so, and this is like it is, he gives the parable or he gives the illustration. This is like a man, he said, he would say it this way sometimes, I'm traveling into a far country or he was going to take a trip or he was going away and he distributed all of his goods and he wanted them to put it to work. And so this one guy, you know, went out and buried it. And that's where uh, the 30th verse comes in at. And he said, that one guy that had a, a talent and didn't do nothing with it. He called him unprofitable servant. And you know, a long time ago, I, I probably used this text before and I called it uh, unprofitable servant, or are you an unprofitable servant? Uh, you know, how, how many of y'all know, uh, we, we ought to be willing to do whatever the Holy Spirit would bid us to do or tell us to do or lead us to do. You know, it, 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 we, you know, salvation is free, but, and Francis just mentioned this here a while back, and I've said it for years, but Francis, uh, Francis, uh, well, she's the same way. Uh, Francis is free, but she ain't cheap. No, I'm just cutting up, but, you know, salvation is free, but it's not cheap. It costs the Lord his life. And he went through everything he went through for us. And, 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 you know, he did it so people could live forever and have eternal life. And, and, and we ought to be, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, we ought to be a little bit of profit for the kingdom of God. You know, and I'm, please know, I'm not saying you're not. But let me just drop this in. How many of y'all have ever felt like you ought to do something, but, no, wait, wait a minute, don't no, raise no hand yet. How many have ever felt like you really ought to do something? You felt the leading of the Holy Spirit. You felt like you ought to do it, but you didn't do it. And a lot of you raising your hand, I, I've been there too, you know, I, and, and I don't like it, you know. But he, you know, he, he said, you go cast that unprofitable servant where there's, did you hear what it said? That weeping, willing, gnashing of teeth, uh, uh, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do y'all, y'all do understand where that's at, don't you? You read about it in the book of Revelation, that is hell fire. That is the second death. And he said, you cast the unprofitable servant into that. So, you know, I for sure, and I'm not insinuating or saying that anybody is, but I'm just saying, let's be careful. We're in this waiting stage. We're in this time when Jesus has gone away and he's given. How many of y'all are pretty good at some things and you know you are? Now, there are a few folks that probably raised their hand around you. You wondered what they were good for. <laughs> but see, they know something they're good for. Maybe they're just not doing it. Maybe they got that talent buried. But I don't think so, and I'm just cutting up. But, you know, if God gives us talents and skill and ability, you know, there could be, if we'll listen to his voice, there could be a good sign that he's wanting us to use some of that talent for him even just by people around us here in this world or whatever. Now, uh, and please, please know, and I've, I've got to say this, please know that I fully understand that our works, we use our talents, we produce work with it or whatever, and we work real hard for Jesus. We used to sing the song, We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes. Then, then be gathered home. How many of y'all heard that? And we should be to a certain extent. But talking about the work of the Lord, but we don't, we don't, we don't earn salvation by works. It's for Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by the grace of God are you saved through faith, lest any man should boast. It's the gift of God. And so we don't earn our way. We don't work our way for salvation. That's why I say real clear, right up front, real quick, somebody, we had somebody in here a while back and they come and they stayed about this long in church because one day I, I, we, we were talking, they said something and I detected and I felt it and it's something, it was some air. I think Roger ran across some of it too. And, um, with somebody talking to them, and, and boy, they didn't stay long. Whenever, whenever I let them know water baptism don't save you, speaking in tongues don't save you, joining the church don't save you, giving the most money don't save you, or giving the least money don't save you, 
Uh, that might hang you there. But anyway, uh, the, <laughs> how many of y'all understand? You don't earn your way for salvation. It's by the grace of God are we saved through faith. We put our faith in what Jesus Christ did when He died upon the cross. He gave His life. He paid the ultimate supreme sacrifice. I kind of say it that way nearly every time. He, I mean, He paid it. He paid the ultimate price with His life. He, gave, he was a lamb without blemish, with no spot, no nothing on Him, no sin, no guile. Uh, irregardless of what Hollywood says, he wasn't hanging on the cross there looking at Mary Magdalene with you and he could go to bed with her. That is a lie from the pits of hell. And if you watch that stuff, y'all be ashamed of yourself. I'm telling you, to, to, to be sacrilegious like that. And, and, and I'll tell you what, I wouldn't watch a movie. If I know it, buddy, if I hear it, it, it gets cut off in my house. If they use God's name in vain, I don't allow God's name to be used in vain in my house. Are, are around me even. If somebody, and I'm out there and they're a cusser and they're using God's name in vain, I'll tell them in a heartbeat, just leave God out of it. Leave God out of it. Especially if it's, if it's, if it's something I'm in charge of, okay? So, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to feel, feed with that stuff. But we're, by the grace of God are we saved through faith. Not of good works. You can't earn your way or work your way. So when I'm talking about talents here now, I think talents and works are a little bit different, okay? But God has given us many abilities. And, and there are some things we could do, even if you, how many of y'all could not play the piano and you know you could not play the piano? How many of you think you could and you could do just as good a job as Iris and Carol and, and Timothy? No, I'm cutting out. Some of you might could, who knows, I don't know. But if you don't have the talent, then, you know, can, the, uh, over in Psalms it says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And I've always said, uh, you know, a lot of people emphasize, well, he said noise, but I emphasize joyful. Somebody wants to get up and sing a, a special in churches. I've seen it all my life now. They sound worse than I do. Well, if you can sing, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, fine. But if it's just a noise, let's, let's be sure the joyful comes on there. But how many of you know everybody's not called to sing? Everybody's not called to do what you do. You've got some talents and skill that there's no way in the world I can even touch you or compare to you. And I understand that. I'm not trying to be ugly or mean now. But some can do this, some can do that, some can do something else, some can do. And everybody's not called to do the same thing. And, and but again, now, please know, let's separate. It has nothing to do with our salvation. But one of these days, we're going to stand before God, and we are going to have to give an account. And, and there's little things like when he said, I was sick, and you visited me not. Did you know that nearly everybody could make a hospital visit or an in-home visit? Now, they're going to in-home. You have to be sure it's okay with the person that owns that home, okay? Sometimes you have to clear with the family. So you use wisdom. You don't just, I'm going to go, I'm going to go do that. And you just barge in and you stay forever and you eat all their food and all. You don't do that mess. Okay, come on. You use wisdom. But how many of you know, how many of you ever felt led? Somebody was sick and you felt led that, man, I ought to go make a visit. Anybody been in the hot? Somebody been in the hospital, and you felt I need to stop by there and give them 10, 12 minutes of my time, and go by there and visit them. Well, see, here's the thing: that that can be a talent, that can be a ministry, that can be a blessing that God is, in, you know, putting on the inside of you by the power of the Holy Spirit, trying to lead you to do that. And 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 someday. If you're that type of person anyway, let me just say, if it, say if it was visiting or whatever. If uh, someday when we stand before the Lord, you may hear those, you will. We're going to hear these words. We're going to hear some of the same stuff. He'll, he'll, he'll tell some people, well, you, you, uh, you ministered to me. I was sick and you come to me. I was in prison and you come to me. You know, I just, where are you at, James? There he is. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of envious of, you know, Brother James, I, I, I mean, you, I might, I don't believe I knew you back when we were coming to the jail. Maybe you came there or not, but Brother Larson slipped in to the jail through the way of radio. 
and he ministered to Brother James. He led Brother James to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. He led Brother James to a victory over sin in the name of Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit and through the grace of God, through the message of the cross. Brother, Brother Larson got in that, that prison where Brother James was at. And y'all don't worry about Brother James. He's not a criminal now. Another thing, his past is past. He's, he's covered with the blood of Jesus and all that's behind. How many of y'all know that's the truth? Brother James is a precious brother in the Lord and we rejoice with him and we're thankful. Now, he don't have no record no more. He don't have no record no more. There was a time on earth when in the book of heaven the old account was settled. Woo! For sins yet unforgiven. My name was at the top and many things below. And something anyway, he got it settled. And settled long ago, long ago, long ago. For my old account was settled long ago. And the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away. And the old account was settled long ago. See, that, that's, that's a song for James there. And, and, and you know, but let me, let me just say this. Even over the years, now, we, COVID has knocked us out, okay? And, and I've, I've got to get on now. I need to get down and see the sheriff, or I need one of y'all to have influence with him, see him for me. That could be a talent you could use. You, the door would be open for you. God can use that as a talent. You can get us back in. And, and they blocked us. They would not let us come, and they shut it down because of COVID. And so far, we even checked one time, and they still wouldn't let nobody in. But we don't know what the story is now. But someday... We're going to hear the Lord say, even as a church, I'm talking about individuals in church, you won't be blamed for everything because I'm sitting at the top. I'll catch most of it, okay? But when God speaks to you on doing something, then you're responsible for that. But he can say these words to us. I was imprisoned and you visited me not. Or I was sick and you didn't visit me. Well, Lord, when do we not do that? when you didn't do it to even one of the least, one of these little bitty ones. It's the same as not doing it unto him. You know, there's, there's so many things that we could, we could do. I, I, I don't know why this keeps coming to my mind, but I do want to encourage you that, how many of y'all understand, and I just told this to somebody, it's, it might be revelation to some of you, it may not be, but how many of y'all know And I'm not trying to get out from under anything, but how many of y'all know that shepherds do not bear sheep? Y'all understand that? Who bears sheep? Sheep bear sheep. And it stats now with the churches even years ago you know how many people come to a, a local church because of the pastor, because they like him? Boy, this is going to give us an ego. It's going to make us feel real good. Those great old big churches that run thousands even. You know how many people come there? Probably got a little bit better percentage, but not too much. Three percent come because of they like the pastor. You know how many people come because they like somebody in the congregation, somebody invited them, and they were friends with them, and they come with them, they decide to come with them, and then the next thing you know, the Holy Spirit got a hold of them, begin to move in their heart and life. They like the singing, they like the teaching or the preaching or whatever, they like something, and they, they like, you know, 43% come because of the people in the church. And then another 40-something percent is because the building is beautiful. They come to that. They want to be a part of it. And then about 20-something percent is because of the location. And then another big percentage is because they like the parking lot. It's a nice parking lot. Well, we're losing them on that. <laughs> and buddy, that stuff's expensive. How many of y'all know it's expensive? But maybe one of these days. I don't know. But anyway, one of these days. But None of y'all been griping or fussing, and we appreciate it, and you come, and we thank you for that. But, you know, getting back to the deal, you know, if we'll, if we'll let the Lord use us and lead us, there's no telling what he may lead you to do as sheep going to sheep. Come on. As reaching out to somebody else, even just a little old friendly, give your neighbor a bottle of water and say, hey, 
hey, man, I'd like to invite you to church. We got living water flowing around there, you know. But anyway, just, you know, reach out to them. If you see somebody hungry, you know, we can, we can feed them. You don't, you, don't, you don't have to feed everybody. This, and, and, it, and, it, and it did talk about the people that are part of the kingdom. Because he said, in as much you've done to the least one of these, my brethren, the least of these, we've not done it as unto the Lord. Or if we do it to them or for them, then, then we've done it to the Lord. He's going to say someday, well, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was sick and you come to visit me. And we go, Lord, when were you sick? Well, when Sister Bertie's sick. See, I mean, when she's sick and somebody, and some of y'all go, there's some of y'all gone and now she can't, don't get me wrong, she can't have everybody come to her house till, till she gets right up on top and when she's on top, she'll be here every time doors are open, okay? I promise you, then it wouldn't hurt if you swung by uh, without even calling. But right now you need to call. You need to find out or call Francis, and Francis can kind of coordinate for you or whatever. Some of y'all do, though. Reach out. I'm so glad. But what I'm saying, one of these days when we stand before the Lord, he'll, he'll, he'll even say that. When you did it to Bertie, you did it to me. When you went in the jail, you know, used to we get in the jail and we used to go every Sunday and I'd be so tired. And then I'd have people over the years, several people, different people say, oh, don't do that preacher. You got to get back and be here ready Sunday and we'll take care of that. And one guy did it for three weeks and then quit and I didn't even know he'd quit. And so there our church was not reaching into the jail because somebody got quit. Somebody just throwed their old talent down and buried it. And, and, and wouldn't keep going. And I don't want that going on. I don't want us to start something and then not, and, not, and then let it, let it die, let it quit. That, that don't look good for the body. That don't look good for the church. And it don't do those that are needing a visit. It don't need somebody needing ministry any good whatsoever if we take the ball, run with it a little bit and drop it, and we don't make it in the end zone. We got to, you know, when the Lord comes, and, and by the way, you know, James talks about, about the works. He said, I'll show you my faith with my work. How many of y'all believe that when a person's a child of God, you're going to have some works? You're going to have some good works? How many of y'all found out good Christians, I'm talking about dedicated Christians are different people. I mean, they're good people. They're helpful people. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll reach out. So, you know, and I, please, no, I'm not saying you're not. I'm just saying, oh, I'm sorry, Jerry. I'm not saying you're not. I'm not fussing at you. But one of these days we're going to stand before God and, and these, these talents that God, these skills, these abilities and stuff that God has blessed us with. Some of y'all can do so much. Some of y'all are so talented. Some of y'all are so skilled. Well, you know, I just want to encourage you to start reaching out to people. I, I honestly believe, honestly believe, and, I, and, I, and I've got some with a bad attitude. <laughs> They go, I don't want church to get no bigger because I know everybody in it. Well, shame on you. Ever, the bigger this church is, the more souls that are in the kingdom of God. You know what I'm saying? And I've heard that with several people say that. I just like it size it is. Well, guess what? I don't. I'd like to see more people come and get saved. More people get in the kingdom. More people multiply and reach out. Well, I'm not trying to get as big as, and I'm not going to call nobody's name. We're not trying to get as big as this and down here or that and in some other city. We just want to reach people for Jesus. And I know there's a lot of unreached people around Natchitoches and in the surrounding area. Don't, don't y'all don't feel like there's people we could reach if, if we would just listen, listen to the Holy Spirit? You know, I'm, please, no, I'm, I'm not blaming anybody. I, I, I try to, and they don't come for me. And, and if they won't come for me, then some of y'all say, well, it wouldn't come for me if they won't come for a preacher. But if you try it, then you might find out they come for you and it wouldn't come for me. But I try to invite people, get people in the house of the Lord every Sunday. And, um, and I have a lot of people lie to me. Anybody ever had anybody lie to you? Say, I'll be there Sunday, you can count on me. It's kind of like that boy said he'd see that girl. He just got through telling her he'd swim the deepest ocean for her. And he said, and I'll be back to see you Friday if the creek don't rise. <laughs> let's, let's stand together. I, you know, whatever our hands find to do, the Bible tells us that we ought to do it with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and everything we do, we ought to do it as unto the Lord. And uh, 
I, I, I really do think that if you'll just be open to the Holy Spirit, there's going to be a lot of people who won't do nothing. I understand that. And, I'm not, and, if, and if you think, well, you're talking about me. Well, I am if you're not going to do nothing but, or don't want to do nothing, don't want to let the Holy Spirit lead you or guide you. And I don't mean that ugly. But I understand everybody won't take a ball and run with it. Everybody won't go see nobody. Everybody won't. And I, it's not all about visiting. Please know that. Please know the Holy, how many of y'all know, again, you raised your hand earlier, a bunch of people, the Lord has led you to do something before and you didn't do it. I think it's high time we get about the master's business all the way to the pulpit, okay? I, so so please, please understand, it's not a fuss or not a gripe, but one day we're gonna stand before him and he's gonna say, well done. That's the thing that Dave Reber don't wanna hear, is well done, thou good, because he's been burned 40% of his, well, forget it. He says that, I stole that from him. But one of these days, the Lord's gonna say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now, enter thou in the joys of the Lord, and I'm gonna make you ruler over many. And I think there's all the stuff we can do. I think we've all got talents. And I think we'll put it together and channel together and work together and be a good team. There's no telling, there's no telling what the Lord will do. So please, please understand me. I'm not fussing, but I do believe the coming of the Lord is nigh at the door. I do believe the Lord is coming soon. How many of y'all believe that? And, 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 and you know, there's a stupid old saying that you and I both have probably heard all of our life. Let's just go ahead and say it, closing out. It said only one life will soon be passed and only what's done for Christ will last. And so, you know, it's so true, isn't it? I know it's simple, it's silly, but it's so true. Pretty soon this life will be over. And what's gonna count is when we bring the stuff before the Lord, however it is, I don't even know how it is, but he knows. You know, he'll keep up with it. He'll keep the record. You don't have to keep record on it. Just when you get an occasion, an opportunity to do good to somebody or for them or to them or see them or visit them in their time of affliction, just keep doing it. Many of y'all are doing that anyway. Just keep doing it. And someday you'll hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things, just a few things. And... I'm going to make you ruler over many now. Just a few things. Faithful over a few. You can't get out and reach the whole world. I know that. And again, I'm not fussing. But how many of you really want to be open before the Lord here in these last days and say, God, use me. Use me if you can. If you will, use me. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. I want to just ask a question. Is anybody in here and you're lost, you're not ready to meet the Lord? If you were to die today, you'd want to have time to pray. Maybe you're here, maybe you're a backslider. Maybe you used to be in right relationship with the Lord, but you've backslid. You, and, and, and we know, we know when we slip away from God. We know we're living for Him or we're not. But you'd say, okay, I'd like to get back in fellowship with God. Or either I'd like to get back right with God. I want you, if you would, I'm not going to try to embarrass you, just come to one of these old altars. And I'm going to ask somebody there around with you, there by you, or maybe somebody knows you, come with you. And just kneel down or stand. It don't matter and have prayer with you. We'll just believe the Lord. Anybody, you want to make your calling, your election sure. Here's a beautiful young lady. She needs somebody by her side. And we're gonna believe the Lord. We're gonna believe the Lord with her. Anybody else? I'm not gonna hold you. I know you're hungry. I know there's television that you gotta watch. I understand, that's fine. But this, that right there is more important than even eating lunch when it comes to eternity. Here comes somebody else. Can somebody pray with that young man? Thank you. 
Anybody else while the Spirit is moving, tugging on hearts? Get, get right with God before it's too late. I remember when Birdie came years ago. <laughs> she was out there fishing. I stopped and invited her to church. She came. She gave her life to the Lord. And she was, she was on up there. She wasn't an old lady. She's a good looking lady. And still is. She gave her life to Jesus. And been hanging in there ever since. Sometimes all it takes is just an invite. I'm going to invite you one more time. Anybody want to come? Make peace with God. Whatever it is. Maybe you're here and you, you say, hey, I've got something that, man, I, I really feel bad about. And I want to just tell the Lord one more time, I'm sorry for it. Feel free to do that. We're not judging you. We don't care. We won't ask you what it is. Praise God. Okay. Let me just say, if you need to go, want to go, God bless you. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord. And I really honestly don't even think your fellowship, somebody will bother these. We have somebody with them to share with them and pray with them right now and support them. So if you want to visit, you go ahead. Thank you for being at Oasis today. Thank you by way of video, by on YouTube, wherever you might be. Thank you for joining us. And we appreciate you. We love you. We pray the Lord will bless you. He'll lead, guide, and direct you. Uh, he'll, he'll be leading you to do some things. Praise God.